Hi, this is Hank. This is the video you've been waiting for. It's the complete video of my 14 foot wide by 21 foot long dry pour slab. So I did this in three sections uh, over a period of like four weeks. I took a vacation in the middle of this. So I've got the, I did the far section first, then I did the, in this screenshot, the closest section to you second, and then I did the middle section last. So I, I removed the forms on the inner edges of the outer forms and poured the center section right up against the, the slabs that I poured previously. One thing I'll point out is when I formed this up, I did form up the entire 21 foot by uh, 14 foot area so that I could control my slope of the slab. I did put a pretty aggressive slope, a quarter inch per foot. Um, and that was by design. You can see I'm uh, digging into a grade here with this slab. And I was trying to minimize the step off up, up there from the grass uh, down onto the slab. And then on the close side, the uh, step off of the slab back onto the grass. So trying to compensate for that. So I put the maximum slope on the slab that I was comfortable with so I could have kind of a compromise between... Uh, the two evils there so i hope you enjoy it if you do please give me a thumbs up uh, if you haven't subscribed go ahead and do that for me if you will and i'll get right into it i'll show the center section first then hang out and i'll show you how i learned from my mistakes on the first section and the second section what i'm doing here is removing the forms from the inner wall of my slabs already have done this way I will pour right up against the existing slabs for my center section here I'm showing I have wire mesh coming through from one section to the next that was underneath my forms is why it's so low this is to tie the slabs together you notice here when I'm cutting open the bags I'm really gutting those bags this is by design because I don't want to be lifting all of those bags. I have 60 bags per section, 80 pound bags. With the way I'm cutting them open, I'm basically just picking up the paper, not really lifting the bags again. Now I'm just kind of smoothing out, uh, filling in a little bit before I start using the screeding tool. Now I'm just giving it a rough drag to kind of see where I'm at. Gonna add more bags out here. Pulling the wire mesh up into the uh, into the middle of the slab. Now I'm actually starting to do a little bit of finish screeding. You have to make sure you have a lot of material um, ahead of the screed. Well, some material ahead of the screed, say it like that. Anywhere there's a void of material, your rocks will show at the top. So adding more material, the rocks pack down and the powder stays on top. So that's what it looks like the first three or four feet. So you can see it looks pretty good. Uh, not a lot of rock showing, a little bit of sand at the top, but it looks pretty good. Now I do a rough pull when I first start out and just kind of see where I am. Then I'll go back, fill in the low spots. And then, then I'll start working the screeding tool. Just keep filling in the low spots. I find it easier to focus on one side than the other. Just making sure I have plenty of material packed up against that edge. If you have kind of a void of material, then that will that will not be a good setup. You'll have crumbly edges. So keep packing material into that edge there. Now I've come over to the right hand side. I want to make sure I keep my edge clean so that the screeding tool doesn't ride up onto any loose rocks. That will leave you a rough finish. As you ride up onto the rocks, it will, you know, leave you a bumpy finish out 
further out into the middle of the slab. Just let the tool kind of work its way. If you're doing this with the two before, which you certainly can, uh, I could not do it the two before by myself. Uh, I tried when you see the video later on of the first slab, I just physically could not work that eight foot long two before keeping pressure on it and screeding it side to side and dragging all that material. It was just too labor intensive. So that's why I came up with this. Basically it's a sander that's attached to uh, three boards there. The bottom board I've got some bevels uh, on the leading edges. Um, it would work either direction. That kind of packs the concrete down, the mix down as you as you drag it. See there, it's a little bit too packed. I've got to kind of dig it away a little bit because it packs it down so good that uh, it kind of gets uh, builds a wall there. So I just work this on down through the uh, through the length of the uh, slab. Anywhere I have uh, voids, just fill it in. Just give it the rough drag, see where I'm at, see where the voids are. Go back, fill in, fill in, slowly work the tool down. You can go back as many times as you want. It's all about patience. Whatever finish you're happy with, this is where, this is where it happens. You're not going back later and fixing the finish, so whatever you end up with. So now I'm getting down toward the end. I'm in a little bit of an awkward situation here because I'm below grade, so I'm kind of uh, pinched for space. But uh, normally you wouldn't necessarily have that situation when you're doing this. I just worked myself uh, over to uh, this corner to finish up. So you see where there's a, a lot of aggregate showing there. Um, ultimately you just have to keep adding more mix until that until the rocks pack down below the surface. You don't need to filter out the rocks um, I've seen a lot of people just trying to add straight powder in these situations, but it doesn't matter. It, you just have to have enough mix that it uh, can work its way uh, work its way down in there. Anywhere you have rocks that won't go down, it's usually because you have a void, uh, not enough mix packed in. Just keep adding more, and it will it will all uh, just the rocks will go below the surface ultimately. And see with this uh, screeding tool that uh, I can I can work the screed board with one hand, just letting the the sander vibrate and allowing it to float along. Much easier than doing it with uh, just trying to screed with the two before. You have to have that sawing motion, that back and forth. If you just try to straight drag a two before all the rocks will be on the surface. You have to do the sawing motion. That's what the sander does for me. It gives it just just enough of that sawing motion that uh, I don't have to shuffle the, the tool back and forth. I just have to just slowly drag it and uh, let the tool do the work for me. Okay, now I'm starting the edging. Just run the edging tool around the perimeter just to break the corners on the outer edges and then between the slabs, I run the edger down there, and that will give me the break line. Should the slab crack, hopefully it would crack on that line, so it would be less noticeable. So I'll run that around. Then I'm going to blend everything in with the dry paint roller. Just to give it a more even look. Do that over the entire slab. And once this is done, we'll be ready to water. Now when we water, it's very important you have a mist setting on your garden hose. 
you need to uh, mist so any droplets or you know any a large amounts of water will disturb your uh, your surface well here I am uh, sweeping uh, any mix that I got on my already finished pads so that they don't get wet and uh, set up but that's basically what it looks like you see a little bit of sand on the top but that is okay no large rocks now I'm misting the first mist is very important that you're careful not to disturb anything now the process is you you give it a mist wait they say an hour but it's really just until you know the water soaks in and then give it a second mist um, you know an hour later and then they say after that you can just water freely I gave mine three mist sessions because I wanted to make sure that I didn't uh, disturb anything with with the hose so that's all there is to it um, you give it uh, the three mistings two if you want after that you can water it but still be careful um, you could still uh, disturb the surface um, so it's just important that you there I'm feeling it's it, this is my, my third watering um, so it's been about you know two hours surface is kind of it's solid but it feels like spongy uh, but there this there is like a crust on the top so you could water it but I'm not taking any chances okay thanks for sticking around now I'll show you the first section I did I'm learning as I go I'm trimming the wire mesh on this one I trimmed it uh, short like you would if you were just doing a single slab what I should have done and what I did on the other side was let the mesh extend underneath my form so I could join the slabs together with the wire so I also want to explain those holes that's where the posts for the roof of my picnic shelter that I'm building here in this location um, those holes will be filled with concrete and that will give extra support underneath the slab so this is Mastercraft brand uh, concrete mix um, for dry pour uh, I've used Mastercraft and I've used Quickcrete Quickcrete is night and day difference better Quickcrete feels like flour this Mastercraft stuff feels like sand I can't get the aggregate to go down uh, I struggle with the, the first this entire slab here and then when I start the next lab I start out with Mastercraft and then when I run out I go by Quickcrete and I cannot believe how much different it is so let's slow down the video here to real speed um, here I'm explaining that uh, you need to keep the forms clean uh, or at least clean them before you water the concrete because in some of the other videos that I watched if the concrete mix hangs out over onto the form then when you remove the form you'll have a chip in your surface so what I'm doing there is just cleaning the form oh, so I'm, I'm finding that screening this wide of a section by myself I'm not able to get a really good not able to get a really good finish um, very easily had to do a lot of going back and forth but what I did discover if I leave these little uh, low parts with exposed um, aggregate pits I can use the mag float and just kind of pound some extra concrete in there out <clears throat> so that's a little easier to do a little touch up spot like that and then after I get that touched up the way I like it then go ahead and 
run the paint roller over it to blend it all in. So that is proving to be easier to me than trying to get it screeded perfectly. Um, both are a lot of work, but this is physical. You know, it's hard on your back doing this by yourself. If you had two people, screening it probably would be the way to go. Um, but anyway, that's, that's a little trick I've discovered. I can touch up a little uh, imperfections with the mag float. I tried the steel float. That does not work. That makes the rocks show more. You gotta use the magnesium float. So, kinda like what you do when it's wet. Add a little, you got a low spot. Work it in. And when I get it where I like it, I blend it with the paint roller. And that's a lot less strain on the back than going back over this 20 times with the, uh, with the screen. So I've been at this for a little bit, come up with a few tricks. I was having an awful time screening this seven foot wide section, uh, doing the board back and forth and dragging it up on edge. Um, so I came up with the idea of attaching the sander to the board. That takes care of all the back and forth motion. And uh, so I just tip up my leading edge, let the sander do all the hard work, then I just slowly drag. It's doing a real nice job. So there's 63 bags. I'm gonna need a few more to finish out this section. I have not gone back and tried to make the surface uh, as perfect as I can yet. I've just uh, gone over it with my uh, power screed setup, uh, which works really nice. It's taken a lot of the work out of this job. So um, I'll go back and see if there's anything I can do uh, some of this. There's a lot more aggregate on the top than I wish there was. And as we know, it won't go away later if you, once you get it wet. So I'm going to go ahead and edge it and... Uh, run a mag float on some of it some of these uh, divots add a little bit more to it and mag float it um, and then smooth it all out with the paint roller see if i can get a consistent surface i can tell with this uh, mix there is going to be some uh, aggregate on top uh, some fine stone which will be okay um, but i'll try to get it as smooth as i can so i've got this entire slab screeded out and it's got some imperfections in it still. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll go around and use the edger on all four edges. And then what I can reach, you can you can touch up dry spots with the mag float. So I'm going to touch up what I can and then blend everything with the paint roller. So I'm going to go around the entire perimeter good I can make this look before I get wet. Okay, so I've got it all screeded out. I've got uh, the edges on. There's a little more aggregate showing than I wanted. Um, maybe it's the brand of uh, concrete that I got. Uh, I know I did my experiments with Quickcrete and then end up getting this at Menards um, because they had it available in the quantities I needed so that may be part of it but what I'm going to do now is roll this paint roller over the whole thing and kind of get a consistent texture and then I'll be ready to start watering Okay, at some point you just have to say this is what I got. So I'm done trying to make it, the texture look any better. So now I'm going to start, start the watering. So I'm going to mist this entire thing until the color changes. Come back.
back an hour later and mist it again. Come back an hour later and start watering it. So here we're getting started on the second slab. Uh, just tried out um, screeding this. Still cannot get rid of, of that exposed aggregate look. I think it's the brand of, of uh, concrete mix I'm using, using the uh, Menards Mastercraft. I had uh, some quick creep for my trials and that aggregate would go right away when you screed it. If you screed it, uh, you know, enough and carefully enough. I uh, just cannot make it go away with this brand of concrete mix. That's where we're at. We're going to go ahead and continue on. See, there are, there are some spots where I've got plenty of uh, cement on the top and no exposed aggregate. But um, overall, there's going to be a lot of places like this with a lot of exposed sandy aggregate. Um, I don't see any way to get rid of that with this mix. Okay, so I ran out of the uh, Menards brand concrete mix and so I just picked up some quickcrete and my goodness it is so much easier to work with so you can tell the, the Menards brand there where I start the quickcrete there uh, this is just pulling the trowel or the uh, screed across at one time not going back uh, no big pits like I was seeing in this other brand uh, a lot of uh, powder on the top um, world of difference so note to everyone quick crete is what you want if you're uh, if you're doing this dry pour stuff all right just gonna run the edger here just to break the corner what I don't want to do is leave a big imprint. Um, I just I'm worried more about the corner than anything else. Um, I'm going to roll out any any other marks you know, on this side. So if you're still with me, I appreciate you sticking in there. So basically, I'm going to edge this section, um, focusing on the corner. Try not to dig the edge or tool into the uh, inner side too much. That leaves kind of a hump that you have to deal with later. Uh, so I'm just going to go around with the edger, then roll it out with the paint roller. Then when that's all done, we'll of course start the watering process. So the big takeaway I learned on this particular section was switching to, to the quick crete brand concrete mix i could not get that exposed aggregate look to go away with the mastercraft brand and i've seen other videos where people were saying you know you can't make the aggregate go away and i'm thinking well yes you can because i did experiments and it went away but i did my experiments with quick crete if they were using something like what I was trying to use here then that was the problem so your brand does matter other than that it's the uh, the screening process you do have to have that sawing back and forth motion you have to drag slow uh, if you drag faster than your sawing you will expose rocks so that's my tips hope you enjoyed these videos appreciate you uh, go ahead and like and subscribe that would help me out a lot.